It's time once again for Weekend Connection on the Bible Broadcasting Network. My name is Ed Phillips, and in just a jiffy, part two of my interview with Dr. Jeff Barrows from the Christian Medical and Dental Association. What do you say we get connected on Weekend Connection? Good afternoon, my friend. I welcome you to Weekend Connection on the Bible Broadcasting Network. This is part two of my conversation with Dr. Jeff Barrows. He's with the Christian Medical and Dental Association. Last week, we talked about the COVID-19 vaccines, and we're continuing that discussion today. However, just recently, something major, a major development occurred regarding uh, specifically the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and I thought it would be good to have Dr. Jeff elaborate on that a bit, what all that means in terms of, well, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine and the COVID-19 vaccines at large being distributed. So, Dr. Jeff, uh, thank you once again for joining me and joining our BBN listeners on Weekend Connection. Well, it's good to be with you, Ed. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to do this. So, really major, Johnson & Johnson, uh, this is a temporary hold, right? What's going on? Well, they have found a, uh, a very rare complication. Uh, it's, it really is a, a type of a blood clot. Uh, most commonly, they're seeing it in the brain. It's in the base of the brain. And I think they began looking for this because the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is very similar to the AstraZeneca vaccine. And the AstraZeneca vaccine uh, has also been associated with this uh, a few weeks ago. And in fact, the European Medical Association put the AstraZeneca vaccine on pause to look at it. And because they're so similar, I think the FDA and the CDC kind of said, hey, is there a possibility this could be happening with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine? And sure enough, they did find a few uh, it's it's really, and I have to underline few, they, in looking at it, found six episodes of this very rare blood clot called a cerebral venous sinus thrombosis out of 7 million doses that have been given in the United States. So there is literally about a one in a million chance of this causing a problem in somebody getting the vaccination. So uh, out of an abundance of caution, Uh, The FDA and the CDC both decided that uh, we want to put a pause. It was mainly the FDA because it's the FDA that has issued the emergency use authorization and and look at this further to make sure that there isn't more than that's going on that they're not aware of yet. So what goes on from here with this hold? Do they like go back to the drawing board and uh, figure out what to do different or what happens exactly? Well, they've had one meeting, which was last week, and I imagine what they're doing right now is asking the the manufacturer Johnson and Johnson and looking at the the theirs system as well for any kind of unusual reports of of uh, headaches or that type of thing to really make sure as much as they can what is the actual incidence of this rare thrombosis and 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 uh, it's also associated with a very low platelet count that's called thrombocytopenia and i would imagine that if they don't find a marked increase uh, there are several different possibilities uh, that they could uh, do moving forward first of all all of the the thrombosis that have occurred in the united states have been in women between the ages of 18 and 48. And so they may decide to restrict the Johnson & Johnson vaccine to men only. That's one option. Uh, They may restrict it to men and then women over the age of 50, or they may decide to include women that are between the ages of 18 and 48 with the caution uh, that this rare association uh, with this thrombosis has been uh, elucidated. I'm sure you'll agree that these vaccines were developed very, very quickly. Um, The name Warp Speed says it all. And, uh, I mean, they were developed very, very quickly, uh, traditionally, historically. 
uh, much more slowly for various reasons. Given the quickness of the development of these vaccines, uh, rate for me, if you will, and for our listeners, uh, the efficacy of the vaccines and the safety of the vaccines, if you would. Yeah, let me uh, address the, the quickness first. And uh, what has happened in the past is that the the entire financial commitment within a pharmaceutical company for developing a vaccine lies on that pharmaceutical company. So they're not going to invest millions of dollars up front very easily uh, with a big study. So what they have typically done in the past is they have done very small studies, phase one, phase two, and phase three. And then as they see success, they will gradually enlarge the studies over many years before they finally get to the size of tens of thousands of patients, because that's a very expensive study. And so for that reason, mainly financially, it takes several years to develop a vaccine. Well, with Operation Warp Speed, the government took that risk away and they said, we will give you the money to to do the study. You don't have any financial risk. And in order to get the study, we want you to write up front after you've completed phase one and phase two, we want you to enroll at least 30,000 patients in your study. And so that really shortened the timeline down greatly because suddenly then we had data Uh, for six months with 30,000 patients with each of the vaccines. Uh, Pfizer actually enrolled 44,000. Moderna enrolled 30,000. And half of those got the vaccine, half got the placebo. And so because the government provided the money ahead of time, there was no financial risk, we got the data much faster. And the data shows that, that all of the vaccines are very safe. There are most of the side effects that you hear about are what we call kind of uh, an immuno reaction. It's a reaction of our immune system, and and that really is, in a way, it's a, it's it's an encouraging reaction because I myself have have been immunized with Moderna. I had a, a redness around where I got the shot. That tells me my body began reacting to the the vaccine itself, which is what I wanted. That's why we get the vaccine. We want our body to develop an immune response. And typically you might hear that the second shot may cause a greater response. And that also makes sense because we all we know that our body has developed that partial immune response. We get the second booster, then we're going to have a little bit more reaction. So overall, the, the vast majority of people have, have done very well with these vaccines. There have been a few allergic reactions. We call it an anaphylaxis reaction. That's to a particular chemical that's common within vaccines. And anyone who has had that type of, of an allergic reaction to a vaccine should probably not get uh, any of the COVID-19 vaccines, especially without consulting with their healthcare professional. One final question before we wrap up, doctor. Um, I know that there are some uh, throughout the country who are hesitant to get the vaccine for one reason or another. Uh, And could you address those concerns for a few moments? Well, I I hear that there are several different reasons uh, people are are concerned about or hesitant to get the vaccine. And we've talked about a couple of them. One is, is the the ethical side, they, they hear that there is an association with these abortion-derived fetal cell lines. And let me just quickly and briefly say that, that if that's a major concern, th- there is a difference between the three vaccines that are available. The messenger RNA vaccines had the m- least amount of association with those abortion-derived fetal cell lines. Johnson & Johnson has a greater association because they're using uh, actually one of the fetal cell lines for ongoing manufacture of the vaccine. And so if, if one of your listeners says, well, I want to get the vaccine that is the least associated, that would be either Pfizer or Moderna. So that's one reason. The second we've also addressed, and that's the safety concerns about how quickly these vaccines have been developed. And then there there are a variety of, of theories that are out there. I've heard people say wild things like, you know, there's a microchip in these vaccines. 
uh, that the government is going to be tracking us, uh, that, that there, uh, there's no need for the vaccine, that there are other treatments that are available. And there are treatments out there, but nothing is nearly as effective as these vaccines. Once you are completely vaccinated, your odds of even being a carrier of the virus drop to well below 1%. And your chances of being hospitalized uh, from COVID-19 uh, is, is well below 1%. Do you see a day where these vaccines will be available orally in pill form? I know that countries such as Israel and others are really looking into this. Uh, highly unlikely, not in the near future. Uh, and that's because our, our, our digestive system will work through the coating of these vaccines and render them useless. And so that's a, that is a major barrier. I don't see that happening in the, anytime soon. Dr. Jeff Barrows, I thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy schedule as a physician to talk with me and talk with our BBN listeners about the COVID-19 vaccines. And this has been very, very informative. It really, really has. So, uh, thank you so much uh, for taking time today on Weekend Connection. My pleasure, Ed. Good to be with you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to today's Weekend Connection with Dr. Jeff Barrows. Weekend Connection is a public affairs program of the Bible Broadcasting Network, and it's heard every Saturday afternoon at 4.02 p.m. following the 4 o'clock news. Thank you for listening to this feature, a production of BBN, the Bible Broadcasting Network. BBN provides 24-hour Christian programming, great Christian music and Bible teaching. Listen to BBN by clicking the link in the description.